In this video, we give an introduction to the co-integrated vector autoregressive model. So we start with the vector autoregressive model, or simply the VAR model, given by xt equal to theta 1, xt minus 1, plus theta 2, xt minus 2, plus epsilon t. But note that now xt is a p by 1 vector instead of a scalar. So we have, for example, three variables, could be consumption, income, and wealth. We have the lag of xt, so that's also a p by 1 vector. And now we have a p by p coefficient matrix, theta 1. Likewise, we have a p by p matrix of coefficients in theta 2. We have a p by 1 vector, which is the second lag of xt. And finally, we have a p by 1 vector of epsilons. Now we assume that epsilon t is a multivariate normal distribution, Gaussian distribution, with mean zero and covariance omega. So again, this is a p by one vector. So we have a p by one vector of zeros, and we have a p by p variance covariance matrix omega. We can rewrite the VAR model into a vector error correction model. We do that simply by adding and subtracting terms so that we get delta xt, the change in xt, we get a coefficient matrix pi multiplied by the lag level of xt, and then we get a coefficient matrix gamma 1 multiplied by the change of an xt minus 1, and finally plus epsilon t. So looking at the dimensions, we still have p by 1 matrix here, but now it's the first differences. We have a p by p matrix pi, p by 1 matrix xt minus 1. We have a new p by p coefficient matrix and a p by 1 vector here and a p by 1 vector here. Note three things. First, all variables are endogenous. So in a single equation approach, we were building a model for yt given x and z, but here all the variables in the vector xt are endogenous. Second, all variables are predetermined. So we are working with a model in reduced form. And the VAR model here is a model for xt given the joint past of xt, so it's the past of all the variables. Finally, note that all the contemporaneous effects are modeled through the covariance matrix omega, because we allow the shocks at every point in time to have a non-zero covariance. So all the contemporaneous effects are modeled through the covariance structure of the shocks epsilon t. To study the co-integration properties, we analyze the structure of pi. So pi is the p by p matrix of coefficients to the lag level in the vector error correction model. Let r equal the rank of the matrix pi. And then it turns out that if r is greater than 0 and smaller than p, where p is the number of variables we have, then xt is co-integrated. And we can decompose the matrix pi into alpha, beta prime. So pi is a p by p matrix, and we can decompose that into a p by r matrix and an r by p matrix beta prime, where r is the rank of pi and p is the number of variables. So p is the number of variables. R is the number of co-integration relations. Then we have P minus R common stochastic trends. And note that beta prime XT is stationary combinations. And here we have R of these. So we have R stationary combinations. The dimensions here, this is R by P, this is P by one. So jointly we have 
R times 1, stationary linear combinations of the variables that we have in xt. So as always, we get beta prime xt, which is a stationary relation, given that the variables are co-integrated. Note that here we have p variables, so p could, for example, be 3, and r, the number of co-integration relations, could be 1 or 2. The coefficients beta, that's our co-integration coefficients, while alpha, that's our error correction coefficients, and they tell us which of the variables are error correcting whenever the system is out of equilibrium. Now we can use the property that under co-integration pi has reduced rank We can use that to decompose pi into alpha beta prime, and that gives the co-integrated var model. So that is the vector error correction model, where we simply replace pi with alpha beta prime. So we get delta xt equal to alpha beta prime xt minus 1 plus gamma 1 delta xt minus 1 plus epsilon t. So this is the co-integrated VAR models. Note that beta prime xt minus 1, that's our co-integration relations. And alpha, that's our adjustment coefficients, our error correction coefficients. Finally, we can briefly consider an example. So assume that we have a vector for x, which includes consumption, income, and wealth. So we get a vector and regression model for ct, delta yt, delta wt. And now assume that we have p equal to three variables and we have r equal to two co-integration relations. That means that alpha is going to be a three by one matrix. Alpha 1, 1, alpha 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2. And now we can write out the two co-integration relations and let's assume that we have ct minus 1 minus beta 1, 2, yt minus 1. So we have one co-integration relation between ct and yt, while the other one is between ct and wt minus 1, like this. And then we have a 3 by 3 matrix gamma 1, gamma 1, 1, gamma 1, 2, like this. multiplied by the lagged first differences. And finally, we have epsilon 1t, 2t, and 3t. So this is a vector error correction model for the three variables, assuming that we have two co-integration relations. So in this case, the co-integration relations here are I0. They are stationary linear combinations of the original variables in xt, and we have the error correction coefficients given here in alpha. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.